Hello everyone and welcome back to our Python course. Um, in this lecture we will talk about functions and now I would say after learning a lot of Python concepts from for loops to while loops to if else statements, now is the big chance where we actually dig into computer science aspects. And functions is basically the stepping stone of what you will learn in computer science. So let's start. In this image here, this is basically a combustion engine. It's basically what your car looks like from the inside. So imagine a function being that, where you have many statements, many code blocks, and it executes a specific um, action. So simply speaking, a function is a block of code that executes a specific action or gives a computer a specific instruction. So let's dive into what a function actually is technically. So a function has a header. Always in Python, when you want to define a function, use def. And this is a rule in Python. It's a syntax rule. Use def, which basically tells your Python program that, oh, I want to start a function right now. After def, you can use any name. It's similar to naming variables, but this time you're naming your function. After your function name, you have to use um, round brackets. And this isn't a tuple, by the way. This is just round brackets so that you can add um, the parameters within those brackets. And as I, as I said earlier, parameters are basically like inputs to um, give your program instructions. There's something called type annotation, and it's simply defining the parameter types. It's not necessary to do it in Python, but it gives other computer scientists at least an idea of how your um, function works. So let's say I have two parameters, which are ax and shoe. They're just random names. So ax is a string and shoe is a float. That's exactly what I'm doing. I use a colon to, def to define the type of ax. So this gives a chance to other, for other computer science scientists to understand what exactly are your parameters. And then lastly, you have the return type of the function. So you can say, is it a Boolean? Is it an integer or something else? This is an example of a function. So I start with the keyword def, def, and then my function name is add one. Add one is the name of the function. I keep a space between def and the name of the function because def is basically like an instruction. And then I use the open round brackets. And within that, you can see I have two parameters, which are list and val. List is of type list, and then val is of type integer. And then here, I use dash and arrow which is basically telling Python that, oh, look at this function, it's basically going to return a list. So you start the code by, by putting in a column. And what this function does is that you are adding one to each item of um, list. So I use a for loop because as I said in one of my earlier lectures that you want to actually iterate through your for loop. So for item in list, item plus equals to val. So your val can be one, or your val can be any other integer that is basically provided to the function header add one. So let's say if my val was a five, that means I'm going to keep on adding five to each and every element in my list. And then lastly, I return back my list. This is maybe a very, very simple skeletal form of a function in Python, but at least you'll get the idea of how it actually works. There are other type annotations for a function or a variable, and these are basically like advanced type annotations. So you have any. Any means that the function or a variable can have any return type. So it can be either an integer or a string or a float. It doesn't matter. It could be anything. You have union. 
So from the word union in math, it means it can have either one of two return types. So for example, if you had a union of int and float, that means that function or variable can either be an int or a float, but it can be nothing else. So it's limited to these two. You have optional, so it can be a specific type, like an integer or a float, but it, or it can be nothing at all. And that's where the keyword none in Python comes in. None in Python means it is nothing at all. So, for example, if you had optional string, that means your function or variable can either be a string, but if it wasn't a string, then it should be an automatic none. It can be, cannot be something else. And then here's a complicated type annotation called variable. So it takes in two expressions. The first is a list of types. So it's used basically for a function's arguments. You can say the types of its parameters. And then the second is the function's return types. So it's mostly used for a parameter that is a function. So if I had callable int int as a first expression and then bool, that means my function takes in parameters, two parameters of type int, and then it should return back a boolean. These type annotations are not very commonly used in Python, but it gives you at least an idea of some very important computer science aspects. Before going on to our next lecture, I want to try and build a function with you. So let's start. As I said, you start with the keyword def. And then let's say I want to, uh, I don't know, multiply every item in a for loop with a value provided. So I can call my function multiply. And then my parameter is going to be val, sorry, um, list, which is of type list, and a val, which is of type int. And then my return type should be a list as well. Oops, and I forgot the column because you want to start a new block of code. So you can say for item in list item multiplied equal to val. And then you basically want to return back a list. Whoops. So this is like a very simple definition of a function. And then I have this block here. You don't need to mind it, but it's just like how I can call a function. So I can say print multiply of, let's say my list was one, two, and three, and I want to multiply each and every one of them by five. So let me just go through the straight. You have one, two, and three, which is basically list, and then you have val, which is five. And it makes sense to put in the type annotation because you know that this is a list and this is an int. And then here I'm printing multiply because multiply is going to return back a list. And that's basically how it should work. It prints one, two, and three which is actually incorrect because you were supposed to multiply 5 by 1, 2, and 3. But there is something wrong about this. I'm going to keep it to you because I want you to try and figure out. This is part of, um, this is part of uh, debugging, and debugging computer science is basically when you catch an error and you don't really know how you can solve it, so you just keep on testing and trying. So I'm going to keep it up to you. and. I'll see you in my next lecture, which is about doctrines and comments.